Hi everybody, this is Gad Saad. In chapter 6 of The Parasitic Mind, I discuss the affliction of ostrich parasitic syndrome, which is a malady of distorted and irrational thinking. And in that chapter, I have a section that uh, wherein I tackle focosality. In other words, where you try to argue that something causes something else, using completely shoddy and hallucinatory, quote, thinking. Uh, in the past, I've talked about this in the context of uh, Six Degrees of Noam Chomsky. This is where I ask people for any given malady to link it to the U.S. industrial military complex in six or fewer causal links. So if a Amazonian frog dies, please use the Chomsky six degrees of U.S. military complex uh, causality to arrive as to why it's the U.S. that is to be blamed for that thing. So what I'd like to do, it might be a bit, take a, take a bit of time. I want to read the entire section from my book and then link it in this case to how everything causes climate change and climate change causes everything. So here we go. All right, so this is uh, starting from page 124 in the parasitic mind, six degrees of focosality. Those infected with ostrich parasitic syndrome succumb to a broad range of cognitive biases as a means of protecting them from reality. One of them involves ascribing an illusory network of connectedness between variables. Many important phenomena in our daily lives are organized at as networks, be it the small world phenomenon, human connectedness, the neurons in our brains connected to one another via synapses, the world wide web, electric power grids, social networks like Facebook or biological systems. That our world consists of an endless number of interconnected phenomena uh, or elements has led to the so-called butterfly effect, the idea that a small perturbation in the starting conditions of a system could yield sub substantial downstream effects. While it is indeed true that our world is composed of countless networks of interconnected parts, the problem arises when people construct networks of focosality to explain a given phenomenon. For example, in 2015, Bill Nye, a self-described science guy, found a way to connect an Islamist terror attack in Paris to climate change, saying, quote, it's very reasonable to conclude that the recent trouble in Paris is a result of climate change. There is a water sh shortage in Syria. This is fact-based. Small and medium farmers have abandoned their farms because there is not enough water, not enough rainfall. And especially the young people who have not grown up there have not had their whole lives invested in living off the land. The young people have gone to the big cities looking for work. There is not enough work for everybody, so the disaffected youths, as we say, the young people who don't believe in the system, believe the system has failed, don't believe in the economy, are more easily engaged and more easily recruited by terrorist organizations, and then they end up part way around the world in Paris shooting people. You can make a very reasonable argument that climate change is not that indirectly related to terrorism. It's related to terrorism. So this is just the start of things. The more we let things the more we let this go on, the more trouble there's going to be. You can say, we'll stamp out the terrorists, but everybody's leaving their farms because of water shortage. That's a little bigger problem, close quote. So the Bataclan attack in Paris was, as Bill Nye has explained, very much related to climate change. So then I write, one wonders why Chile has not produced a greater number of terrorists given that one of the most arid places on earth is its Atacama Desert. But through the magic of assumed connectedness, you can link anything to anything if you're not bound by logic and fact-based rules of causality. Why do individuals succumb to such shoddy thinking? In his book, The Conduct of Inquiry, the philosopher Abraham Kaplan wrote, quote, in addition to the social pressures from the scientific community, there is also at work a very human trait of individual scientists. I call it the law of instrument, and it may be formulated as follows. Give a small boy a hammer, and he will find that everything he encounters 
needs pounding. It comes as no particular surprise to discover that a scientist formulates problems in a way which requires to their solution just those techniques in which he himself is especially skills, skilled. The humanist psychologist Abraham Maslow in The Psychology of Science added, quote, I suppose it is tempting if the only tool you have is a hammer to treat everything as if it were a nail, close quote. This is very much related to the notion of methodological fixation, which occurs when researchers become single-minded about the use of specific data collection or data analytic procedures, irrespective of their suitability for a given research problem. If you are a climate activist, all calamities are due to man-made climate change. And as a parenthesis, I'm going to come back to that in a second. If you are a radical feminist, the patriarchy, along with toxic masculinity, are to blame. Perhaps not surprisingly, climate change has been blamed on toxic masculinity. If you are a member of the diversity, inclusion, and equity cult, then naturally all ills stem from a lack of diversity, inclusion, and equity. If you are a member of the Demo Democratic Party, all problems originate with Donald Trump. In the philosophy of science, the principle of Occam's razor means that all things being equal, simple explanations could be preferred, should be preferred to convoluted ones, a useful guard against the faulty epistemology of folk causality. In his Philosophia Nat Naturalis Principia Mathematica, Sir Isaac Newton proclaimed, quote, We are to admit no more causes of natural things than such as are both true and sufficient to explain their appearances. To this purpose, the philosophers say that nature does nothing in vain, and more is in vain when less will serve. For nature is pleased with simplicity and affects not the pomp of superfluous, superfluous causes. Close quote. What a... What beautiful writing. The problem with those who succumb to the six degrees of focusality trap is that they generate long sequences of illusory causal pathways. This can be necessary if you spout progressive platitudes that are manifestly untrue. This is from page 124 to 126 in my book, The Parasitic Mind. So then I decided uh, to do a quick search. It, 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 this is literally what I did, okay? I just entered, I just tried to think of the most insane associations to climate change, and I entered climate change and that variable. And there's almost nothing, I, I don't think in one case that I not enter something and didn't get many hits. I didn't generate all the links here, but I'll leave it to, to your... Uh, you know, to, to your wishes if you wish to go back and uh, do these searches. So here we go. So these are things where I entered climate change and then typically it causes this this variable, okay? So first I started sort of in, in, in medicine. So climate change and diabetes turn out to be linked. Climate change and cancer are linked. Now that one, I might give a small affordance to that one because let's suppose... Uh, there is an ozone hole and that increases UV radiation that can increase skin cancer. Fine, I'll buy that one. But it turns out that climate change is related to all sorts of cancer realities. Okay, let's go on. Climate change and heart disease. Climate change and mental health. Climate change and AIDS. Climate change and lack of exercise. Climate change and obesity. So for example, when I was 86 pounds heavier than now, I was under, you know, the, the nefarious influence of climate change. Now that I've lost 86 pounds, you might think, oh, it was due to the fact that I do 15 to 20,000 steps a day. I'm eating 15 to 1700 calories a day. I don't eat much carbs. So you might think that I have personal agency. It turns out that much of my weight fluctuations are linked to climate change. By the way, I live in Montreal, Canada, when it's too hot in Montreal, in the summer, it's climate change. When it's very cold in Montreal, it's due to climate change. When the weather doesn't change much or at all, it's due to climate change because status quo demonstrates that it's due to climate change. So literally, epistemologically, every single possible event, A or not A, are due to climate change. As we know, Karl Popper, the famous philosopher of science, said that that 
which cannot be falsified, hence the falsification principle, that which cannot be falsified cannot be within the realm of science. And the example that I give to my students when I'm trying to explain that phenomenon is the example of destiny. Destiny as a concept can't be a, a falsifiable position. Therefore, it doesn't fall within the realm of science. Why? Let's suppose I want to test whether the concept of destiny is valid. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out tomorrow and I'm going to cross the street. If a truck hits me, then it was my destiny to be hit by a truck. If, my, if the truck doesn't hit me, there are only two possibilities. A truck hits me or it doesn't hit me when I cross the street. When it hits me, it was my destiny to be hit. When it doesn't hit me, it was my destiny to be hit. Therefore, all possible instant instantiation of events in the naturally occurring world would support the idea that it was my destiny. Therefore, there is no experiment that I could set up that could falsify the concept of destiny. You follow? All right. So I explained already climate change and obesity. Climate change and anxiety, very related. And there's even now a thing called eco-anxiety. So not only does climate change cause anxiety in general, they're linked, but there is a specific subform of anxiety that's called eco-anxiety. Climate change and dementia. Now, here's the next one that's interesting. Climate change and libidinal drives, how sexually, uh, how, the, how much sexual desires you have is very much linked to climate change. So very, very often, my wife and I will look at each other and you know we're both really in the mood. That's probably because climate change is looking good. And then when we sort of are not in the mood, it's largely driven by the fact of, you know, whatever climate change pressures we're under. And you see that around the world. The, the reduced fertility is probably due to climate change. Climate change and personality traits. Your personality can change because of climate change. Now, personality theory, by the way, there are several, there are extreme uh, frameworks for personality theory. Some argue, this is called the radical situationist view, that there is no such thing as a personality cast in stone. Everything is due, your personality changes as a function of each situation. Then there is the uh, other end of that spectrum, which is your, your personality is cast in stone, largely due to your genes. And then, of course, the truth is that it's somewhere in the middle. We, we do all start with different points on the continuum on a given trait, and then that can go left or right depending on uh, situational interaction. But it turns out now that it's climate change that causes. So, for example, I sometimes am extremely gregarious, hence I score high on extroversion, or I score, I become pathologically shy. That's largely driven by climate change. Uh, here's a good one. I tried to also come up with really creative ones. Climate change and medieval witch hunts. These asshole witches in Salem, largely driven by climate change. Here's another really good one. Climate change and violins. So here the idea is that the depending on the weather, it creates different properties of the wood that creates different, uh, you know, uh, sounds that are either you know, good ones or bad ones. And so therefore, how good your violin sounds is highly related to climate change. Climate change and domestic violence. I mean, I learned in my first year doctoral course, when I was first exposed to evolutionary psychology at Cornell University, that uh, domestic violence has one overwhelming uh, trigger, and that's when uh, your the male long-term partner, uh, uh, either through suspected or realized infidelity, goes into a violent uh, uh, situation because he's upset that his wife, uh, you know, may have cheated or did cheat. Uh, but it turns out that that was wrong. Climate change is really the uh, the thing. The, the driver here, the, the cause. This is from Harvard. Uh, climate change increases rapes, aggravated assaults, robberies, burglaries, larceny, and vehicle theft. All of these things 
increase and they even give you the exact amount they're going to increase by over the next i don't know i can't remember exactly 40 50 100 years because of the change in climate right so i mean you want to reduce rapes you need to deal with climate change because the key driver of diabetes cancer uh, aids uh, schizophrenia dementia domestic violence all of these things are very much driven by climate change i already discussed the bill nye story climate change and terrorism now here's a good one my intellectual hero joe biden said that you know the the, the transitory inflation you know or the, it's not really an inflation but if it is an inflation it's transitory it's largely it's a it's the putin uh, hike price hike it's putin who did it right well now it turns out that we know that climate change and inflation are inextricably linked we also know that climate change exacerbates income inequality we also know that climate change and insurance companies because you you get more adverse weather so there's more insurance claims so you want to create a more healthy actuarial reality you got you have to tackle climate change uh Climate change and consumer behavior, there's all kinds of consumatory patterns. And as you know, I'm a consumer and evolution psychologist. All sorts of consumer behavior are linked to climate change. Take, for example, tourism, green tourism. It's all related to climate change. Climate change and football, meaning soccer. And so here the, the researchers were looking at things like, you know, how much air travel there is when teams play each other. So, so soccer, in a sense, is contributing to climate change. Uh, now, he, this is interesting. Climate change is racist. This is this is so so. I've always thought. I mean, I've seen tsunamis, and those fuckers are racists. Okay, I've seen a tsunami, and the way they they marginalize people of color, it's disgusting. So, climate change is a form of racism. In, in other words, inherently, climate change is racist. And of course, it also uh, uh, damages or influences negatively marginalized people of color, marginalized communities of color. So in that sense, it's also racist. But it's also transphobic and homophobic because we also know here that climate change is very problematic or more problematic to the LGBTQ community. By the way, I, I swear I'm not engaging in uh, satire here every single one of those i generated by doing a search climate change and and i just tried to come up with as many insane examples and it never failed climate change it either causes everything is at the root of everything uh bad things cause climate change and so on okay so let's keep going climate change now this is a good one climate change and cannibalism i gotta tell you I used to look at my neighbors and I never thought of cooking them. But recently, I'm looking at my neighbors because I'm under the influence of climate change. We all are. We're all, I mean, we probably, Occasional Cortex, AOC, has told us that we've got you know, 12, 12, 14 minutes left, right? And by the way, uh, the alarmists, the climate alarmists have been giving us the date of the end of the world for many many years so you can go back and look at the past 50 60 years and oftentimes it's for the exact opposite thing so we are going to there's going to be a mass extinction extinction of earth because of a 20 years later there's going to be a mass extinction because of not a the opposite that but that epistemologically is tight okay so climate change and cannibalism, if you're looking at your children, if you're looking at your spouse, if you're looking at your neighbors and you're saying, God damn, I would like to butter that up and, and have a go of my neighbor in, in a sandwich, you know, with a bit of butter, you know, a bit of seasoning, those feelings that you're getting are undoubtedly largely due to climate change. Now, here are the last two I'm going to talk about. I, I, by the way, I could have gone on for another six hours because it, there was like an endless litany of examples I could use. Islamophobia is accelerating climate change. I think this was at a talk at MIT. MIT is a very prestigious place. Islamophobia 
is accelerating climate change. You you want to you want to fight climate change? Stop being Islamophobic. And then this one, I totally agree with. Pornography causes climate change. So think about it. Eradicate racism. Eras eradicate transphobia. Eradicate Islamophobia, and get rid of the porn industry. And you're well on your way to eradicating climate change. And in, by getting rid of climate change, you reduce the rates of cannibalism. You reduce the rates of medieval witch hunts. You reduce the rates of inflation, income inequality, uh, terrorism. Terrorism is largely due. The 70 countries where there have been terrorist attacks, more than 35,000 terror attacks since 2000 since 9-11 alone in 70 different countries in the name of one ideology is really not because of that ideology. If you really think about it, climate change was driving those cases. Eradicate climate change, you eradicate terrorism. So there you have it, folks. The reason why I spend so much of my time fighting these things, the reason why I wrote The Parasitic Mind and it it, it hurts me while I'm very grateful to every single person who bought it. It hurts me that this book is not being assigned in every single high school and university and every book club, uh, not because of any pecu pecuniary uh, wishes of uh, on my part, but because this is a mind vaccine that works. This does show you the lunacy of what happens to people when they are parasitized by insanely dogmatic, ideological, imbecilic, suicidal ideas. C climate change, we can agree, is happening. It is not the cause of everything. It does not, and it is not the outcome of everything, because if it causes everything and is the outcome of everything, then it is nothing right? We know this from philosophy of science, rule, one of the fundamental rules of scientific thinking. The second thing I want to say is to then discuss whether we should be spending $500 trillion over the next 90 years so that we can, we may or may not reduce earth temperature by 0.02%, is a conversation worth having, right? Life is about trade-offs, right? If I do action A, I give up plan B. It's about trade-offs. It's about opportunity costs. It's about pros and cons. It's about costs and benefits. So having a discussion about climate change policies doesn't make you a science denier. It makes you a person that has a functioning brain, okay? I will be having... I'm not sure if I should be engaging in this shameless plug because he's not yet to come on my show, but Michael Schellenberger is supposed to come on my show. Maybe I'll bring up some of these points. And again, these things have real consequences. So Jordan Peterson, as you know, he now has to go through re-education with the Ontario College of Psychologists, and there's a bunch of things that apparently he transgressed, one of which was you know, his questioning a lot of the official Canadian policy on climate change. I was on the impression that we are free individuals in Canada. We can question anything we want. Well, we can't. You can't, quent, you can't question transgender ide ideology. You can't question climate change. You can't question Justin Trudeau. You can't question, you know, the use, the, 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 the forced use of pronouns, all sorts of things that you can't question because, you know, it is hate speech. It's offensive speech. It's disinformation. It's misinformation. It's it causes disharmony to marginalized communities and so on, right? So the euphemism changes, but the ultimate goal always remains the same. Believe what I believe in or else. In the Middle East or else means we behead you. In Canada and the US, it means we ruin your career. Have a good day, everybody. If you support my work, if you consume my work, please consider supporting it in one of many ways. Please subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe to uh, my podcast. Comment. Uh, give it a rating on, on the Apple Podcasts. Donate through one of my donation portals. There are many ways by which you can support people 
who are not beholden to the orthodoxy and who take great personal and professional risks to speak their minds so that your children can grow up in a free society. Take care, everybody.